I don't know what he said, but it must have been good. Okay, I love it. I love it. And this is just... This is a beautiful morning. It's a beautiful Sunday morning. I, I, uh, I get very emotional in a Sia. I might get emotional today. I'm already feeling a little emotional. Um, hearing some of your whys. I, I told the Daimi as I was going through the exercise and the five categories of five, in my little notebook, I put an asterisk beside the last two. And I said to myself, everybody's why will be in the last two. People you love, and how you can contribute to others. It's not about the Ferrari. Not about the mansion. It's about people. It will always be about people. And that is where ASEA is very different to many other companies in this industry. Many other companies talk about the Rolex watch and the Ferrari and the mansion. But in ASEA, we teach ethos. We teach principles. We teach people. And that is why I aligned myself with ASEA. It's why I joined ASEA. There's thousands of companies out there, but there's only one ASEA. And sometimes I get asked at the uh, if I'm at conventions or I'm at big meetings, people come up to me and they say, give me one piece of advice. Give me one piece of advice. Like they want me to give them the magic, we call it the magic pixie dust, the stardust, you know? And it's always the same answer. My one piece of advice is understand what you have your hands on. That is it. I will never see another ASEA in my lifetime where everything comes together. The technology and the people behind the technology. You need, you need both. If the wrong people had got their hands on this technology, we would not be here today. If it was sold to the pharmaceutical industry, it would probably have been buried. If another network marketing company that was just focused on Ferraris and mansions, they would be out of business by now. But this technology, and I believe it was divine, this technology landed in the hands of men of principle, of ethos. But want to do the right thing. Not for the short term, but for the long term. So many companies in our industry today, all they're, all they're focused on is fast growth. They don't think about legacy growth. We call them fireworks. <laughs> they're everywhere. There are very few companies today that are thinking legacy. My friend Chuck Funky, who used to be the CEO of ASEA, he said, there are levers that you can pull to get fast growth, but they are not the same levers you pull to get legacy growth. And so for a company to focus on legacy growth, a company that will be here for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, a company that is focused on putting people first, a company that's focused on doing the right thing, not the easy thing, but the right thing. And for that to be joined with this incredible technology, you will not see another ASEA in your lifetime. Does I mean, has been in the industry, how long does I mean? 22. 22? 30 years, 52 years between us. ASEA is very unique. And so my piece of advice that I give people that ask me for the magic 
is do not take the seer for granted. Understand what you have. That is the starting place. Understand the value of what you have. Sometimes diamonds can look like glass. There's a lot of companies that are just glass. C is a diamond. Okay, so that is what I want to start with. Understand what you have. Do you want to translate? Apa yang ada cuba sampaikan tadi dalam ucapan pembukaan dia dia sangat berbesar hati atas semua yang dikasih ini dan dalam kita punya exercise semasa kita cari kita punya why tadi dia sangat terharu bila dia tengok kita semua participate and jumpa kita punya why dan dia cakap why yang sepatutnya berada dalam dua kategori yang terakhir okay. kita punya family dan apa yang kita suka lakukan untuk bantu itu yang akan move people ke hadapan dan Alan juga uh, bercerita tentang okay, yang bahagian part yang terakhir tadi betapa pentingnya untuk kita faham tentang apa yang ada dekat tangan kita ini. sebab okay, ada banyak company MLM dekat luar sana Okay. Asia boleh buat keputusan untuk pergi dengan begitu cepat Rara company, grow very fast Dia tahu liver macam mana Dia tahu te- butang mana nak tekan okay. Tapi, butang yang sama tak boleh Bawa Asia menjadi syarikat legacy So, Alan tegaskan kepada kita Supaya kita jangan leka Sebab apa yang ada di tangan kita ini is Kadang-kadang kita nampak macam kaca Tapi sebenarnya, diamond So, memerlukan pemahaman untuk kita faham sesu- Apa yang kita ada di tangan kita ni adalah sesuatu yang sangat berharga Dan daripada kita faham itulah baru kita akan pergi mengorak ke bahagian yang seterusnya And then, I think that's conclude your first session Thank you Thank you boss I call him the boss <laughs> He is my boss He's my boss I'll give you a principle of leadership Servant leadership. Yeah. Leadership is not, oh, look at me and look how great I am. Boys. <laughs> leadership is serving others. Mm-hmm. And I get emotional again. The Zymi is a great example yeah. of servant leadership. Yeah. When I sponsor somebody into the business, I say, I go to work for you. Bahia. I go to work for you. I am your employee. You're my boss. See, people look at the tree and they think the sponsor and the sponsor and the sponsor. They think in terms of corporate America, corporate Malaysia. Oh, the boss, the boss of the boss, the boss of the boss of the boss. No. Correct leadership is servant leadership. So I call him boss. He's my boss. I go to work for him. His job is to figure out how to put me to work. It's how to put me to work. How to use me for a three-way call. How to bring me on for a train. But he's boss. I'll give you two, I'll give you a secret to success. Was I me stand up? The secret to success is wear a black shirt. Okay. That's it. We can all go home. Do you need to translate any of that? Okay. Jadi apa yang Ella kata tadi adalah kita dalam bisnes kepimpinan. Okay. Ramai orang salah faham pemimpin ni dia ingat bila 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 cerita sebagai pemimpin dia entitled untuk that position. Contoh kalau aku dah jadi bos kau kena dengar cakap aku. Tapi dalam Alan punya pemahaman tentang kepimpinan ni adalah Bila kita menjadi pemimpin ini, kita kena ada servant punya pemimpin Maksudnya sifat kita adalah kita kena Berkhidmat Ya, kita pemimpin yang berkhidmat, bukan yang berhormat ya. Yang berhormat ni dia ikut dia punya title, dia tak mau turun Kita pemimpin yang berkhidmat, turun padang The moment kita sponsor orang, maknanya Kita, dia bos kita Okay So, apa Alan cakap? Tugas kita adalah bagaimana nak menggunakan kita punya pemimpin tadi supaya boleh bantu kita. Bukan mempergunakan. Menggunakan dia, leverage dia untuk kita bantu kita dalam masa yang sama kita kita copy apa benda yang dibuat. Thanks, boss. <laughs>
Okay, so I love Lazimi's exercise on finding your why. Your why should make you cry. Um, in my training yesterday, I said if your dreams are not big enough, then the challenges will get you. And I gave the example of your dream is like the altitude of the plane, the height of the plane, and the challenges that you will face are the mountain tops, the Alps, the Himalayas, the American Rockies. This business is difficult. As I may said, life is difficult. There are challenges. Sometimes one of the mistakes that we make as network marketing professionals is we make it sound too easy. And then people find it's not easy. It's challenges. Most of the challenges are here. What we do, what we say is very easy. I could teach my 12-year-old daughter what to do and what to say. But the challenges are here, how we think. So these challenges, so I love Lazimi's training because the, the, the dream, your why, has to be bigger. If the plane is flying too low, what is going to happen when it hits a challenge? Not good. So I love that we started this morning with this incredible training of finding your why and realizing that that why will not be the, the toys of life. It'll be deeper, deeper meaning. And every day you need to focus on it. We have a saying, where the focus goes, the energy flows. And what you focus on grows and expands. Can you just translate that? What you, where the focus goes, the energy flows, and what you focus on grows and expands. Okay, apa yang Ella katakan tadi, sebab, okay, dalam setiap hari kita punya perjalanan hidup kita ni, kita kena fokus. Sebab apa yang akan fokus, dia, apa yang kita fokus, itu yang kita akan dapat. Dia akan jadi lebih besar. Kalau kita fokus masalah, masalah akan datang. Kalau kita fokus solution, solution akan muncul. So, choose apa yang kita fokus. By the way, I, I came here this morning without a plan. I did not say that today I want to train on this and this and this and this. I want to speak to you from my heart. So as I write things on this board, it's just things that are coming to me that I feel I want to share with you. Okay, I don't have an, an agenda here today that this is what I'm going to train on. And so as I scribble up here, these are just notes for me to say, I want to talk on this. I want to share this with you. So I hope that I'm divinely inspired to share the right information with you today. Okay. Um, I want to tell you my why. I want to tell you I, I shared a little bit of it. You know, I had my journey to come to America. I'm originally from Ireland. Oh, I know. And there's not a lot of opportunity in Ireland. I come from Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland. We had a civil war for 30 years in Northern Ireland, if you understand yeah. Belfast. Yeah. And I, I was born in 1969, the year the Troubles started in Belfast. And it's a very challenging situation. For my entire life, I lived in that situation. And people are very, very negative. It's the most negative place in the world I've ever found is Belfast. Beautiful place, but very negative. The mindset is always the glass is half empty never half full and it's a very small place not a lot of opportunity and so i saw america at a distance the land of plenty the land of opportunity and i love the american attitude of if you can conceive it if you can think it and you can believe it you can achieve it there is no class system in America. You can go from being the janitor to being the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company. And so the American dream captured me. And for 20 years, I struggled to become 
an American citizen. I did not cross the border in Mexico. <laughs> it was a lot of twists and turns. It was a very, very long journey. It was a lot of hardship. For seven years, I did not see my parents. And I have a very close family. I would do jobs to keep the dream alive, like parking cars. Do you have valet parking in this country? Yes, yes, yes. I was a valet parker. I have driven every car in first and reverse. <laughs> first gear in reverse, every car. Porsches, Ferraris, Mercedes, BMW, but only first and reverse. I never got into second gear. <laughs> Just to keep the dream alive. I have sold lottery tickets on a golf course. I taught flute, classical flute, to 60 children mm. just to keep the dream alive. Okay. And so I had taken this dream so far, I had a visa working with a business partner to build a financial services company. And she rarely paid me. But my visa to stay in America was attached to her. I couldn't just go get another job or I couldn't just go do something else. My visa to stay in the United States, something I had chased for 20 years of my life, was attached to this. I was newly married. I was about two years married. I had a one-year-old child, 10 months old. Life was very, very difficult. Life was very stressful. Honestly, and I'm being very honest, I'm surprised my wife did not leave me. I was not easy to live with because I was very unhappy. I was ha unhappy with my circumstances and I was unhappy financially. The male ego, the male ego says we should provide and I was not providing. I was financially embarrassed. My father got sick, and I saw this technology. I was, I was not looking for a business because I was tied to this other company. But my father got sick, I saw the technology, I sat beside Curtis <coughs> Norton, like this. We were here, eyeball to eyeball with Curtis Norton. I saw the heart of this man. I saw the tears running down his eyes. I saw his lip tremble as he shared what he felt this technology could do for the world. And for the first time in my life, I said, I could work for this man. I will follow him. I will, I will help him tell the world about this technology. But I had a problem with my visa to stay in America. Yeah. I had 10 months before my visa needed to be renewed. I was good for 10 months. But in order to get my visa renewed, so I joined ASEA in May 2009, April 1st, 2010, so 10 and a half months, I had to show that I was earning a hundred thousand dollars a year in order to get my visa renewed. It was a certain, it was a very special kind of visa. It was a visa for an expert and an expert should be making a certain amount of money. If I did not show that I was earning that amount of money, then my visa would not be renewed and the American dream was over for me. Everything I had worked for, 